Greetings. Welcome to the Tour Junkies DFS podcast for the Valspar Championship. And um, I already am having technical difficulties, and that's just what's going to happen. Damn it, DB. Will you just... Can everybody get healthy and do the things we're supposed to do so we can get back to normal? All right? We're praying for you. We're doing all these kind of things. And uh, I just... We need you back. But you know what? We hope you enjoy your week off and um, praying for you, buddy. Talked a little bit about that on the betting show. But my good friend, Byron Linda Q, the model maniac, has agreed to come on with me. He's gracious with his time. I'm a huge fan. And Byron, before we get to going into all the stuff we got to talk about with the DFS show and all the things I got to try to figure out and remember to do that DB does, and I'm going to be all over the place and disorganized, let's start with a little bit of organization and you tell the people all about you, where they can find you, all the great stuff that you do, including in the Nut Hut, which I'm going to talk about after you talk. I'm going to talk about the Nut Hut a little bit um, and uh, some, some cool stuff we got going on in there. So, Byron, the floor is yours. Thanks, Pat. Yeah, no, just to get to DB real quick, we hope you get much better soon with the whole fam over there, DB. Pat's acronyms are just not the same without you on the show. So we're really looking forward to getting you back in the mix there, but happy to kind of fill in as best I can for the gang over here, which, you know, like you mentioned, in the Nut Hut, we're doing all the DF. The DFS stuff has been fun. We've been hitting some good names in there on Saturday nights, and I put put my Rotoballer showdown articles in there every every post round so that's where you can find all my stuff at rollerboard.com and i'll do a, a betting research show on every sunday night and a tuesday night at seven eastern on back nine bets um and then rollerboard.com we're doing a pga show tonight me and spence at 9 30 eastern so come on over and catch us over there me and spence have been having a great time kind of promoting that rollerboard pga show so um lots of fun places to find me and uh, none better than this with my main man pat Awesome. Well, I am excited to have you with me. I know we're going to have a lot of fun uh, today on the show. We did on the betting show already. Um, by the way, um, one of the great things about the DFS is having a tool called BTN. BTN, Bet the Number, is fantastic. Uh, we launched it in January, or they launched in January. Um, you know, they're making improvements every week. Um, licensed PGA Tour, ShotLink Data comes right into the website. Listen, new tools are coming all the time, and we are excited about what we're going to be able to, um, what they're going to be able to bring to you for Augusta as we're heading into that week rapidly. You can use code, code TJ at checkout to get $5 off a monthly membership and $50 off an annual membership. But if you get into the Nut Hut, you get into the Nut Hut Discord, um, you can get an even bigger discount. And if you just DM me or DB once you get in there into the nut hut or if you're already a member and we can give you a discount that's even greater. So you need to get in there. And the nut hut was on fire last week was on absolute fire last week with what we were able to give you out and some information from the DFS standpoint. Um, we gave you out Joel Damon as a good play, not only as a top 20 on the betting show, but as a good DFS play, we gave you some great course intel because we were out on the grounds uh, at Sawgrass last week. And then even a little caddy video uh, with uh, some conditions uh, and how everything was playing that day. So that was great to get the caddy video video in research in the Discord. You really got to get in there. And a couple of things I want to go. This is, this is a little bit, we're going right into kind of the players post-mortem that DB uh, likes to talk about. But first, I, I want to highlight in the Nut Hut, um, we, had a, we had a guy in the Nut Hut who won $75,000. $75,000, Byron. And, you know, look, there it is. There's the lineup. Um, shout out T. Kaz, uh, 634 points. He had Xander. He had Wyndham. He had Ludwig. He had Fitzy. He had Mav, and he had our boy, Joel Damon. Damon, and won himself a little 75K second place. What? Hey, listen. And he thanked the Nut Hut today. He was in there thanking the Nut Hut. So why are you not in the Nut Hut if, uh, if, if this is happening? Right, Byron? 
the nut huts this, i mean t Kaz loving the nut huts i mean the guys got nut hut membership blocked in for life after that second place finish um my favorite part about the nut hut as well pat is the research tab that has the ownership projections from all the different big names you know i think that to me is really really nice to have you know aggregated research on the on the ownership because i know you like to pride yourself as a elite ownership guru even though it is a monday yes. afternoon we'll be getting into those kind of predictions from you so just a fun place to really thrive and and learn more about golf betting and golf dfs i think it's community first and then kind of everything else after that so get your ass in the nut hut asap yes absolutely um it, it's just a great place to be and um Here's another thing. So we'll talk about um, the perfect lineup last week. All right. So you had Scotty, of course, at 12-6. Um, he was uh, almost 35% owned. Um, then you had Wyndham, which was 9,700, and he was uh, just under 8% owned. I was a big Wyndham fan last week, like I, I mentioned on the betting show. I had him at 60 to 1, and I liked him on DFS also. Fitzy, I did not like so much, but he was 3.7% owned, 8,200. Then you had Brian Harmon at 13.2% ownership. Then you had Sam Ryder at 1.9% at 5,600. And Nate Lashley, Nate the Great, at 0.1% ownership. Two players, two players, Byron, that were in the 5K range in Ryder and Lashley. And I know we're going to get to, we got another 5K range again this week, and we're going to get to the 5K draft. And I don't, to be honest, have last week's 5K draft. So I, I can't really, maybe, maybe I do. Uh, Horschel, Pavon, Gim, Taylor. No, that that was a six K I don't know. Anyway, we but got, we got um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some five K players um, this week. Um, but anyway, that was that lineup was forty nine thousand three hundred dollars, and it was sixty one point four percent owned. It scored six ninety five. Um, by the way, the Millie Maker because there was a Millie Maker last week for the players yeah. was actually at six forty two. Um, and that was Scheffler, Xander, Harmon, Doug Gim, Mark Hubbard, and Nate Lashley. That one did not have Joel Damon, actually, but uh, that was the million dollar uh, milli liner, milli lineup uh, for last week. So, um, anyway, any thoughts on any of that? I wanted to mention the fact that CTAS got that 75K without Scotty in his lineup, which is what I was kind of preaching all of last week. Yeah, the guy that's crazy. You know, like, I think that's at 12 8 makes it so difficult to find. You got to be spot on with Nate Lashley and Sam Ryder. You know, like you got to rely on two of those guys to kind of get that that perfect lineup through. Whereas I think when he's in that price range, it's just a lot easier to do what um, C Taz did. And I I kind of did the same thing starting with with the Wyndham Clark Max Homer start. You know, kind of just going with two really good guys that are two thousand dollars cheaper than Scotty. And I think I'll still be doing that you know, going forward. I just, it's so difficult for him to, to get the right lineup around him. What are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I agree. Um, by the way, Mitchell G, Mitchell G, who I don't really recognize that name. So maybe he's a newer member, which is awesome. Uh, won the Nut Hut Listener League contest. He had 535 points. Um, so not quite as high as, as TKAS or uh, the Millie Maker, but um, 535 points. And um, I believe he did have Joel Damon in his lineup also. Yeah. So, look, the Nut Hut's uh, on fire. And before we get into the 9K range, one more thing uh, about the Nut Hut. Uh, listen, if you get in there, okay, if you get in there and you get an annual subscription to the Nut Hut, okay, annual subscription, you are going to get entered into a contest to win two passes we'll say for tuesday at this little place called augusta I, I don't know i've heard of it i think it's pretty cool I, I've, I've heard it's a pretty cool place to be um that first full week in april two tickets in to augusta you need to become an annual member of the discord nut hut if you are not already in the nut hut as an annual member sign up online at tourjunkies.com this is an amazing giveaway i don't really know of many people who don't want to go to Augusta. I, I just, I don't really know. So 
anyway, get in that contest. Um, Byron, let's move on. The 9K and above range. We've got, here's what we've got here, okay? You start off at the top with Xander at 11.2, and then you've got Burns at 10.9 also up here. you got JT and then Jordan. That's the 10K. Um, and then the and then the nine K range starts with Brian Harmon, and then uh, at the bottom is Minwoo Lee. So, you know, it's an interesting week. Um, I think if we're going to talk about, let's talk about the chalk first. And I know you're very excited to know what my chalk plays are because I'm very good at ownership percentages. I really am. Um, I'm probably one of the best in the world now at this point, but. I think here's here's what I think the ownership is going to be. I certainly think there's going to be some ownership on Xander. I, I don't want to. I don't want any part of Xander. I don't think I want to play him this week. I definitely think Sam Burns, who's won here twice at ten nine, though, is going to be pretty high in it. I do think people are going to also go back to Justin Thomas this week, and there's going to be some ownership on him. So those top three, I, you know, I, I see some chalk there. I don't see chalk with Jordan. I do see chalk with Brian Harmon. Outside of that, though, I think there's some decent pivots up here. I think, you know, Brian Harmon, JT, Sam Burns, and Xander is where all the chalk's going to be. What say you, Byron? What do you think? Yeah, I think that's the thing at the top here. There's, outside of basically Xander right now, no one's really playing top-end, top-end golf. I mean, Xander's got the two top fives. Everyone else is kind of floating around there. He's interesting, right? I think I said on my shows last week, I've got Xander in my lineups. Now I just need to find one of the other five guys that can win this thing. You know, like Xander's going to be your your top five anchor for sure in this tournament again. Mm -hmm. I kind of fancy him even more the longer the irons are into the green. I think that really plays into his, you know, skill set the best. At this golf course, you've got to do that. So I'll be I'll be rostering Xander in DFS at 11-2. You know, I mean, if you think about, him in this field versus Scotty in the players' field. Do you think there's a sixteen hundred dollar difference between Xander Shoffley in this field than Scotty last week? What would you uh, have you know, made Xander if you could choose his price? I, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess there's not. If you got a twelve thousand dollar Xander this week, do you think you would have been mad? Like, would that be too too high for him? This week, 12,000 Xander? Yeah, with a 5K range. Oh, with a 5K range? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, personally, I just don't think Xander can win a golf tournament. I know you don't have to have him win at the, whatever the price is, but yeah. I, I still I, I just have a problem with him up top. I really do. <laughs> so. that's, that's the thing is I've tried to come around on that, Pat. You know, like Xander in this field now will have, have to have won twice to make your money up on him betting-wise for a top, you know, for a win. So that's the problem with him. But at 11-2, I'm down. Give it to me. I think Sam is going to be ultra, ultra popular. You know, the the course history is immaculate for him. So I'll take Xander. I think he's going to be a legit pivot off of Sam Burns this week. Yeah. Yeah, I do think. I, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to start with Sam Burns, and I'm just going to kind of leave out Xander. Um I, I do, I, you know, there's a, obviously a ton of arguments for for playing Xander this week, though, and I, I agree with you what you're saying, but I think I'm just going to start there with Sam Burns. And I am going to play some JT as well. Um, yeah. I, I think JT uh, is, even though the, he had the best cut last week at the players, I'm still a big believer in where he's going with his game, so I think I'm going to play some J, JT. I think the interesting play, though, here is Jordan. I don't, I don't want to play Jordan. I really want to fade him. But I think you're probably going to get an interesting pivot option from from an ownership standpoint on Jordan. So I guess kind of talk me through Jordan. Like, do I need to play him or not? That is going to be dependent on what you get up to with the eights. Like, have you got tons of guys that you're going to be leaning on in that range? Or are you going to anchor your... Because, I mean, he's easy the fourth option at the top there. So it's simple to kind of leave him out. What ownership is he going to be? If he's going to be sub 10% ownership, I'll play Jordan Spieth. You know, the guy, when he does pop and his brain is on, at least on dim, you know, the lights aren't fully off, I think he can he can show up. So he hasn't shown any, I mean, these last three starts are a D, 
DQ. <laughs> Sounds like a, a bad trip through the Midwest. Yeah, DQ, an MC <laughs> and a T30, you know, like it's just, it's not good stuff. So, you know, I, I'm always on Jordan Spieth when he's not chalk and hating my life when he is, you know, that's, that's the way I play Jordan Spieth. Let, let the masses dwindle and dwell in, in his misery when he plays badly together. Yeah, I, absolutely. I think you're you're right. I think Spieth to me, if I if I see a a, a non chalky Spieth, it's just hard for me not to click his name. Um, yeah. You know, I, and I just think that that's probably what we're going to get this week. Um, you know, another few names in here that that I do like. Um, I like Nick Taylor. I, I think people, you know, are going to have like a like a something something's going to burn in their eyes when they see him at 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 9100 you know but he should be up here yes he should be like you don't you're not going to want to play him at 9100 because you're used to playing him at whatever he was last week in the 6k's i think i mean but nick taylor is a good golfer and he's playing well this year he's got a win but even since the win um you know he had the 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 t39 at the genesis the t12 at the api the t26 uh, last week at the players, he was up there near the lead. Also, he's played well on this golf course with the top 10 last year. Nick Taylor deserves to be up in here in that 9,100 range. So if I get a Nick Taylor that's not very chalky because people just don't want to play him, he is he's definitely one that, that I like here. Yeah, he's someone I like a lot too. It was on him last week. Didn't quite pan out for all four days. But if you were on someone last week, I see no reason not to be back on them again this week. My favorite part about this range, Pat, is Minwoo Lee at nine flat. After the the treason and and outcries when he was priced at sixty six hundred dollars going into the API, and then that was after his only top twenty finish of the of the year being a T two. So I think I'm I'm out on Minwoo again this week. You know I think the the magic has worn off. I understand you know you get that volatility, but he's just not a good enough iron player for me at this golf course to kind of go to Minwoo, and I think he'll still be quite popular. Um, so that gives you some Nick Taylor love there. I'm in the same boat with Sanjay, Pat, where we haven't seen a lot from him, but if I can get a, a solid ownership outlook from him, he suits this golf course perfectly, right? Like accurate off mm -hmm. the tee, tidy around the greens. And there's no course history to kind of drive people kind of crazy about him. I guess that the T4 is not the worst thing in the world, but um, that was a while ago. So we'll see there. I don't know. Um, an interesting range. Not a lot of... Not a lot of guys I like in the nines outside of Brian Harmon, obviously a big fan of him at $9,800, but you already kind of went there. Yeah. Min Wu, man, <laughs> I wanted to talk about him on the betting show, but, but we didn't get a chance, but I, I just still, we can't get him at a decent number. I, I don't think he's at a good number this week on the pricing. I don't think he's at a good number on betting at 35 to one. Like, I, I just feel like, he gets way too much credit all the way around, whether it's the books or in DFS pricing. And I don't, I don't, I like Minwoo too. Like I've kind of been, I've always been a huge fan ever since really last year at the players. Um, but I just don't think we're getting good value on him yet. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of out on Minwoo also. Um, you know, another one in here that I, I feel like I'm going to end up going back to is Tony Finau. I know. I know. I think everyone's saying it in that voice too, Pat. It's, it's like, going to happen. It's oh going to happen. No. I'm going to end up clicking his name at 9,300. He's only played here once in the last like five years, which was 2018. So, um, and he missed the cut, but he's going to like, if you, if you're looking, if you're a stats person, you're going to, you know, Tony's going to be up there. He, he's going to check some boxes for you, especially on approach play. Um, so I definitely think I, I could see myself going to him. I'm with you on Sung Jay. I'm just not, I'm not going to play, play Sung Jay there. But, um, and then Cam Young was DB's fade on the betting show as far as uh, the season long bet. Oh, yes. I, I don't know what to do with Cam Young. I don't, maybe you have a better idea of what we can do with Cam Young, but I, I haven't really, um, it's just so hard to see what we're going to get out of him. Cam Young's like that, that stick shift at a, you know, carnival where you, don't, you just don't know what gear is going to go into. You know, you're going in, in perfectly. You go from third, the next thing you're in like fourth or sixth gear. You just don't know what's happening with him. And that happened at the API. Just rattling off top 20s, had multiple top 20s at the API. Bet the guy top 20, 
play him on DFS. What does he do? Finishes 36th. You know, like just completely forgets how to putt. And I think that's the Cam Young experience right now is there's always he's he's got kids. You know, we've we all we all know that when you leave the house with kids, you forget something at home. And I feel like that's what happens with Cam Young's game is he just leaves the course, leaves for the course, and there's there's a diaper bag that's left that's just stinking up, you know, the kitchen until tomorrow or <laughs> or just forgets. You know, forgets the milk or whatever. You know, I don't know what it is, but he always forgets something, Pat. And whether or not it's it's going to bite him the following day or that round, it's something, man. And you know, he's an interesting situation. Where do you think he's going to? Who do you think is going to be the most popular outside of Brian Harmon in this nine K range, as the as the ownership whisperer? Yeah, I I think um, oh, that's a good question. I, I don't. Because Brian Harmon I, obviously, is the guy, I think, right? I think Brian Harmon is the guy, and I think a lot of it's going to fall on him. I, I, I could see, um, I could see Sun, uh, not Sung Jay. I could see Cam Young getting a little bit of ownership just off of the recent form, but I, I think a lot of it is going to fall to Brian, which you know gives you some opportunities in here to go to guys like Nick Taylor. Yeah. Um, I mean, who knows? Nick Taylor could be a little bit chalky. I think he'll be over 10%, but I don't think he'll be over like 15. Um, no. But outside of that, Har Harmon is the chalk here. Um, yeah, this 9K he range is a ghost town, if you're asking me from a popularity perspective. Yeah, I agree. 100% yeah. agree. Um, we want to thank our friends at Underdog. If you've not gotten involved at Underdog, you got to get involved. You've got best ball drafts. You've got pickums. It's fantastic. We're lighting them up every single week in the Discord, putting out plays. Uh, it's a it, they're they're adding lines. They're adding new new ways to play on PGA, especially, but obviously all the other sports are there too. And the best ball drafts are the best in market, hands down. Underdog has owned best ball, and you can draft weekly for PGA Tour tournaments. But they also have the majors best ball drafts up right now that you do not want to miss out on before the Masters. So get in there. I think it's like $10. There's a $10 one. There's a $3 one. Draft some players for the majors this year. Give you a little bit of live juice if you want to draft a live player. Huh? Yeah. Have some fun with that. Get a live player in there, huh? Anyway, um, you can use our code. Click our link. Code is junkies. Click the link in the description. Scan the QR code here on YouTube, whatever you want to do. You get 100% deposit match up to $100. Thanks to our friends at Underdog. Um, all right. Wonderful ad read by me. Very excited with what I did there. Um, so let's get into the 8K range. Um, now, this one is this one's a little juicy, I think, Byron. Yeah. Um, there are some guys in here that I think I will I would – I actually think you could just land on a lot of guys in this range and build a pretty, pretty daggum good lineup. So you got guys at the top, like Keith Mitchell – all the way down to the bottom at 8K at 8,000 and Patrick Rogers, who we are not going to do anything with, with Patrick <laughs> Rogers. Um, but there are some guys that I do like in here. One being Cbez, and I know you're a big Cbez fan. You talked about him on the betting show. He is at 8,800. I do think he is a great play this week. I don't know, like, I'm interested to see, like, what the ownership is going to be on Keith Mitchell. Because if, you know... If people are more on Keith Mitchell, I'll gladly go down to Cbez right there. Um, so at the top here, Byron, like, what is your initial thought on some guys that you're you're on, and then where do you think maybe some chalk is going to be, and where do you think you'll pivot to? Yeah, I think Keith Mitchell. Everyone's going to be looking for a good driver of the ball here. He he fits any course off the tee, so that makes tons of sense. But Christian Bezade is as good on approach, I'd say, as Keith Mitchell is off the Imagine you could mesh those two games together. Jesus Christ, we'd build a Frankenstein, right? Like Keith Mitchell off the tee <laughs> and and Bezzi's approach play right now is very, very good. I mean, he's he's just doing stuff that people would never have expected Christian Bezade to do. I think this course fits him very nicely as well. He's sneaky good with his long irons. He's a really good putter when he wants to do the putting thing. And, you know, like we know what he can get up to off the tee. It's just going to be just mediocre nonsense there. But at at this price, I'm fine with it. You know, I think he's starting to catch some steam, though, Pat, you know, in general. Like, I think we've seen him not necessarily at the top of the 8K range, but in the 7s, people have really been going to him because he's got that elite iron play. And I think that's going to really mm -hmm. play a part this week, especially when you've got a top 15 iron player and putter in the field. 
at this price. So I'll go to him. Keith Mitchell just doesn't have that upside. You know, like you take a look at his track yeah. record. We've got that backdoor T9 at the Cognizant, you know, when he when he got all spiced up over the over the, the rain delay there and came out looking like he'd, he'd you know, left the par at 2 a.m. But he still managed to kind of keep it together for us. And that makes you wonder what Keith Mitchell's state of mind is when he's on the golf course. So I'll go to Mav McNeely as well, Pat. I know you're a fan of him too. At this at this price, I'm cool with what he's been up to. Since he's shown up with without injury, he's been rattling off some solid results. So I don't need him to win the tournament in the 8K range, especially at $100. You can, you can do the Sam Burns thing where he just puts lights out at this venue, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think Mav is one of my favorite plays here in this range. Um, just when you look at the recent forum where it is, um, you know, did play here last year, T36. Uh, he's going to check a lot of boxes. When you look at the BTN model, uh, so the bet the number model, he's 30th in that model. He, he's going to check boxes off the tee, around the green, his putting. Um, you know, so I think, you know, it, he needs to get the iron play to, to be a little bit better. But um, Mav at, at 8,100, I think, is is a very good play. And I don't think he's going to be very high owned. Um, if I'm looking at some of the chalk here, it's going to be on Doug Gim again. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of people that wanted to play him last week and they, they wanted to play him for good reason. And he showed up well. He finished T16. Um, I believe he was in the 6K range last week also. Um, yeah. Doug M's just been playing fantastic. And you look at it, I mean, he's literally number one in the Beth the Number model. Um, so I think Doug Gim is certainly going to have some chalk. And I don't mind playing it. I'll, I'll probably eat a little bit of that chalk too with, with Doug. Um, I think you're going to see a, a little bit probably on Keith Mitchell. Um, yeah. Maybe had one, but had one just because of the course history here. But I, I think I would probably fade a chalk he had one if you get any. Now this is where I feel like if 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 DB were with me, he'd probably start making these faces and stuff and like, no, no way Hadwin's going to be high owned. I don't know. I don't know. What what do you think about Hadwin? I think you spot on there, D, uh, Pat. I hate to. I want to. I want to yell at you for something, but it's not going to be Hadwin. I think you know, getting off him at a course that he's popular at worked wonderfully at the waste management. Right. I mean, the guy had one of. His career worst opening rounds, I'd say. If I mean it's miscuts or top twelves over the last five years. You know, that's just the situation you're getting there. So if if what 15, 20, 15 percent or so of people jump on that and it's a miscut, then it's only eighty five percent of the field we've got to deal with next. I'm I'm right there with you, buddy. Well uh, nice. We'll bitch about something else. Yes, we we can. We can get an argument later, maybe. Or not. I'd be happy just not. I'm fine um, with that too. So I, I do think though there are, there are definitely I don't see a ton of chalk in here, but there a couple other guys I do want to mention that I like. Aaron Rye is one of them. Um, he's at eighty five hundred. Uh, he's another guy that's very high up in the BTN model across the board. He's had some good finishes with the top twenty at, in Mexico. T thirty five last week at the Players. I feel like the price is pretty good for Aaron Rye, and there's there is some upside. I don't know if he could win. But I do think um, there's some upside with Aaron Rye. Another one that I think could probably have one of his lowest ownerships all year long that I'm probably going to be tempted by, despite the fact that he's missed two cuts out of his last four events, but he's also had a T21 in there in the top 10, and that's Eric Cole. I, I feel like Eric Cole is going to be – is is finally diving down a little bit in the ownership levels. And this might be, it's kind of like with a stock, you know, when you're looking at a chart, sometimes you 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 look at that chart and you say, you know what? I think it's time to go buy back in. And Eric Cole seems like that one for me this week. Any thoughts that you might have on, on Eric Cole or, or anybody else really in this range before we move on to the 7K range? I love the Eric Cole play. Cole play. Um, whatever songs they do, shout out to them. But I think we're going to get him at some serious discount. You know, he's not doing anything right right now. Two missed cuts in his last three starts, not good. I think this is a perfect buyback spot. You know, I think it's time to go full Wolf, Wolf of Wall Street here and, and kind of just 
pinch those pennies and, and sell them off. You know, I think that's the way to go with Eric Cole. He's cheap, can T5 quite easily, wouldn't wouldn't do it without blinking your eyes. And I like him. I think he's, you know, between Bradley and, and Bears and Mitchell, you're going to look like a four, you know. We've got some, we've got some attractive sevens there, Pat, and not sure what's in that cup, but maybe by the end of the show we find some even – even sexier ones in the in the other ranges, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll we'll go to Eric. Well, there's there's a little podcast juice in this cup. Hey, baby. Uh, you know it's after five here, so um, all right. So I'm glad that there. So we got a lot of agreement, which is nice. You know, we don't. Yeah, we don't always have to have disagreement on these shows. Um, all right, moving on to the seven K range. Another range that I think is is pretty good. I mean, obviously, when you get these, you know, we, we've had this 5K range lately in in on DraftKings. Mm -hmm. It's made the 7K range not so big, which which I kind of like. Yeah. Um, but there are some there's some players in here that I, I think we definitely could look at. You start with Sepp Strzok up top at 7900, and then down at the bottom at at 7K, you got guys like Davis Thompson and Producer Tony, be ready. Rio. Yes, a Tuncia. Yes, a Tuncia is 7,000. Our buddy Rio is down there. Um, Tony wasn't ready. I thought he was going to play. I was waiting for it. Um, all right. Yes, a Tuncia. just, it just, I love it every time. Um, so you got Rio down there at seven thousand. Also, a um, lot of good plays in here as well. A lot of good names. A lot of guys that um, I think are sort of turning the corner a little bit with their seasons and playing a lot better lately. Um, so I want to talk about a few of them. I do think um, if if we're talking about the chalk here in this range, I'll go through that first before I go through some of my favorite plays here. Um, I do think Adam Chink is going to be popular mm -hmm. at seventy one hundred coming off of that second place finish last year here and then a top 20 at the players where he i believe have had a really good sunday or saturday i can't remember but adam shink um i do think yeah. is going to be chalky at 7100 i think a guy like you know up near the top i think sep straka is probably going to have a little bit of chalk too coming off of a good week um now he hadn't had the greatest last few weeks but Sepp is a guy that a lot of people like to play on difficult golf courses, even though I hit him at the John Deere, which is a very easy golf course. So you can't just take one narrative with Sepp, but he has one on hard golf courses before. But I do, so I do like Sepp up there at 7,900, and I think he's going to be a little bit chalky. Outside of that, maybe does Sam Ryder have some chalk? Sam Ryder, maybe. Um, Taylor Montgomery? Like, I'm just... Yeah, I'm looking at this range, Pat, and there's like on bet the number there's there's not a lot of green boxes in either the recent form or course history. You know, if there's like one good green box there, there's not a lot around it, and that makes this range very interesting. I think you could potentially, if you find two or three names in this range that you like, it can open up a lot of a lot of avenues for you because I don't see too many people clicking this range. It's kind of gross. Um, yeah. Like it when is. Brendan yeah. Todd has one of the best finishes out of this entire range, it's it's sneaky, you know. And I think maybe Brendan Todd is not a terrible player at seventy four hundred after missing two cuts, and then finishing sixth at the API of all places, you know. So maybe <laughs> like what are we do? What are we doing? So I don't mind him. Lucas Glover has had just as mediocre results as you can find at this venue, but hasn't missed a cut since two thousand eighteen, since broomstick putters were cool. And I think, you know, returning to courses that he's typically struggled with the putter at with the new broomstick, he's not like losing badly anymore. You know, he's just not a good putter at, at best, you know, like that's his situation. So I think coming back to a ball striker's paradise, Tita Green, Glover at $7,300 kind of fits the bill the best, you know, if you're looking for a, a cut maker, cash play. Yeah, abs absolutely. Uh, you know, I think DB and I talked about this last week. Like you, you have these guys that are like your, you know, DB likes to take his pillow out of town. He takes yes. his pillow with him, and you, you have like because he, you know, he just wants to to lay his head down on something comfortable and he's used to. 
I feel like Lucas Glover is a little bit of a, a pillow play this week. Like you just feel comfortable there. Um, there's some upside. Like you're not going to wake up in the morning with a crick in your neck. Like you're, you're going to feel good the next morning. And Lucas Glover kind of has that feeling to me this week. Great ball striker. Like you said, he's, you know, he's been playing well. I mean, he had, he's had, you know, outside of the missed cut last week, it's been T30, T35, T35. So he's playing well. Yeah. He's, you know, the last five times he's, or four times he's played here, he's made the cut. Um, so he's a good cut maker play. I, I do like Lucas Glover here. Um, I think, you know, I, I feel like you could make a little bit of a case to go back to Taylor Moore coming off the, you know, he won here last year, but he has been playing pretty well lately also. T31 at Genesis, uh, T48 at the API, and then T31 uh, last week at the Players' Championship. Um, kind of middle of the road when it comes to the stats. Um, but he is, you know, he is checking a few boxes on approach, putting, um, and around the green. Three things I do like this week. So I think you could potentially go back to Taylor Moore. Speaking of Taylors, I really want to play Taylor Montgomery. <laughs> And I don't know. I, I know it's because of the players last week in the T11. Yeah. I, I I know that. Um, and I know he's a fantastic putter, and he's fantastic around the greens. But off the tee and his ball striking has not been very good. So maybe I just talked myself out of it. <laughs> but Good. Good. Um, you should. I don't know if he fits this like, I, long iron. I, I was wondering needed. if you were going to go there. No. Yeah. Like, take, take me off the ledge here. Yeah. No. Um, you play Taylor Montgomery with wedges, like where you can hit – Tons of birdie putts, tons of wedges. I think, you know, that that range we spoke about from 175 to 225, where we're going to see massive increases from tour average, is not his range, like, at all. You know, like, he's a very bad iron player from that range. And like you said, like, long-term iron player has been pretty mediocre. So I think he's going to be one of the most popular guys in this range because he gives you that, that T11, you know, that looked quite nice and makes tons of yeah. birdies and all that jazz. But... Whew. Um, I think he can easily miss the cut this week. Uh, maybe we just talked ourselves into a great fade candidate. Yeah. Um, you fade Taylor Montgomery, not more, and you go down to Britton Todd. Um, maybe that's what you do. Um, another one down here is Daniel Berger is going to, you know, catch a lot of people's eye at 7,200. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my tendency is to want to avoid that. He has, you know, you know, been, I guess okay coming back this year. Um, but I, I still don't think I'm ready to land on Berger yet. Um, I think I'm, I'm just going to continue to wait. Um, and, and him like, I feel like he's a play that if for some reason I see him in a lineup on Thursday and I make a lot of lineups and it's like, why is Berger in there? I'm just going to go, well, I probably shouldn't have had that extra glass of wine. <laughs> or whatever, like something happened to me, and I didn't mean I didn't mean to do it, but I did it. Um, so that's that's kind of the way I feel about Burger. Yeah, I don't mind him. I feel like if you if you liked him at PJ National, why wouldn't you like him here again? You know, I think this course fits him to that extent. You know, obviously missing the cut there, so that wasn't good, but maybe that helps us get on him at low ownership because I like him a lot this week. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. Um, all right, Byron, we're moving along here. We're going to go quickly through the 6K plays, and then we'll have the 5K draft um, because, you know what, that's about the only way I can figure out how to how to play, figure out these 5K players um, is just doing a draft, which is what DB and I do. So I we that. will do that for the 5K range. But the 6K range definitely has a few juicy plays in here, okay? And I think um, we never see a ton of chalk, really, in these ranges now sometimes when you had like we had like an evr and i believe men Wu was that mm -hmm. last week when they were in the 6k range and they were obviously going to be chalky um or maybe it was an api i can't remember there was one week where it was just like my god they yeah those guys are gonna be so chalky but api um yeah, yeah it was api that's right um so I, I you know i don't really i gotta admit i haven't looked a ton down here in the 6k range but I don't see anybody glaring like that um you know potentially i don't think joel damon's going to be chalky even though he's coming off of a really good finish maybe novak has a little bit of chalk even though because a lot of people i think are going to talk about him 
Um, but I don't think again, all of these these guys down here in the six K range, I think you could play and feel like you're you're not necessarily, you know, getting a too too chalky of a lineup. But I'll start with guys that I do like up here in the in the top end of the six K range. I like Jimmy Stanger. And we talked about this, Byron and I talked about him on the betting show. I don't think I've mentioned his name at all this year. And I think we came up with a new um, shot shape on the driver. Like after you take a Jaeger shot, you hit the Stanger. Um, what that looks like, I don't know. But you hit the Stanger. Um, it's and low and it's hooking. That's yeah, for sure. it's doing something like that. Low, It's a low hook. Um, but he's playing well. I mean, you look at the last few weeks. <laughs> 38th in Mexico, 35th in, in a difficult course at, at the Honda, or sorry, Cognizant at PGA National. T35 at the Players' Championship, a difficult course. This this all looks pretty good to me. Somehow he played this golf tournament in 2018. I don't know if he was eight years old or what, but he missed a cut. But somebody needs to figure out and tell me in the comments how Jimmy Stanger played here in 2018. <laughs> But I need to know that. But it's 6,900, and he's checking boxes for us. He is 20th in the BTN model. I like Jimmy Stinger. Right below him, too. Kevin Yu is mm. another one that I like this week. Um, kind of up and down um, recent form. Miscut at the Genesis. PGA National top 10. And then miscut last week at the Players' Championship. Um but this is another guy that's checking a lot of boxes, whether it's off the tee, the approach game, um, greens and regulation. Um, the irons are, are pretty good. Uh, you know, around the green is, is tough, but his putting is decent. So I do think Kevin Yu makes a lot of sense down here at, at 6,900. Um, and I will go back to Joel Damon also. I think you run with Joel yes. when he's hot, and I think he's hot. So up top in the 6K range, those are some names I'm looking at. Uh, how about you? Aaron. Yeah. I love the Jimmy Stanger play. That seems like someone that's doing some stuff. Like you mentioned, Andrew Novak, I think he'll be the most popular guy here. So that makes me want to play Seamus Power, who's been stringing mm -hmm. together some some finishes. You know, old old Seamus has made some cuts when he really shouldn't have. And that's that's good enough to me at sixty six hundred dollars. Seamus Power. Um Ben Silverman at sixty five is my guy. I think this guy's just been rattling off top finishes. He's kind of like the Stanger, but just, you know, the Jose Silva, I think. And I think that's that's what you're going to get when you take a few Benny Silvermans off the tee box. T13, T16 in his last three starts. I'm cool with that. I think he's, you know, a really good fit and $6,500 catches my eye there. Um, Alexander Bjork is another guy that I've been kind of looking to break out. And I think he suits these these shorter courses with iron intense like approach shots a lot better than you know these bomb and gouge venues your boy bud cowley i know he's he's a great dfs play in my opinion this week you know we, we see what he gets a little a little nervy on the on the greens there on a saturday sunday but hey he hasn't found himself feeling those things for a while so i don't mind him at all at 6400 dollars. i will mention that davis riley is gonna probably be sneaky chalky for no good reason outside of the fact he's at a 19th and a second year the the recent form is non-existent, so I'll I'll be happy to kind of let Davis Riley beat me at you know six thousand dollar four hundred dollar chalk. Yeah, I definitely agree there. I don't want any part of the Davis Riley if he's yeah. chalk, but he could be because of the history here. Um, we'll move on to the five K range, but a couple of things I, I do agree with you on Ben Silverman. I liked him a lot last week heading into the players. And I think he was right on the number to miss cut, or he was very close. Um, so I do, I do like Silverman a lot and I like Bud Colley. Of course I like Bud Colley. One more name I'll mention in here is Matt Naismith who does have, you know, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't believe necessarily that the course history is a great, um, indicator of, of you know, play this week, kind of like last week at the players, but he has a T21 here in 2021 and then a T3 in 2022. And he's been playing, you know, he had a good week last week at the players at T26. So I do like Matt Naismith. So there we go. That is the 6K range. Now we got the 5K draft, and then we will button up this show for the Valspar Championship. Um, Byron, 
I'm going to let you go first since you're okay. the guest. Okay. Okay. And now here's what we're going to do. We're going to we'll pick six players. So three each. It'll be kind of a snake draft here. Um, so I'll let you start in the 5K range with your first play, and then I will hit you with mine. All right. Let's go with my number one guy who's going to be – ooh, let's go with Rafael Campos at oh, $5,600. I just love his ball striking. I think he's he's one of these guys that's also playing Corn Ferry to a tournament right now in mm -hmm. amongst the PGA ones. So he's he's showing that he wants to to play. You know, like you know, there's been a few guys like Min Wu who's just only played like four or five times this year. Campos is jamming. So fifty six hundred dollars is a steal for me. By the way, he's like one of the best off the tee. Yeah. So very nice. Mm. Okay. I like that. Uh, I'm not a. I'm not. I'm not opposed to that. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to go with a guy um, that I've been very high on lately with with how he's played. Now he did miss a cut at the players, but damn, I think he's another one that was very close um, there. But he had the T36 at the API um, and a very mm -hmm. good finish in Mexico with a T3. He's been playing a lot better. I think the attitude's good. I walked with him a lot last week at the yeah. Players Championship in the practice rounds. Uh, Justin Lauer at fifty seven hundred. I'll go with him. All right, you're up. All right, so I'm gonna go to the top of the, the, the nine, the fives, the top of the fives over here and play a bit of Troy Merritt. The putter seems Ooh, to have okay. fixed itself up to a degree. We love to see that. Remember, he had the yips at one point. And he just seems like he's playing mediocre golf for a 5K guy. Give me a T8 and a T27 at this golf course. Prior to missing the cut here last year, I'm fine with that. And he's he's just been playing solid. He's $5,800. I like him. Okay. I'm a I'm a fan there. Um, all right. This is when it gets. This is when it really starts to get hard. Yeah. Okay. Gets, this this is not now. like. It's not like we're choosing between the best players, which is the reason they're priced down here. Um, all right. <laughs> I will go, you know, I'm going to go with a guy who's checking some boxes for me. 45th in the BTN model. Uh, has never played this this golf tournament before. Uh, he had a T25, though, in Mexico, T47 in the Honda. Um, we did not see him. He did not get in the API. Obviously, it's an elevated event or mm -hmm. the players, but possibly the better Cootie, Parker Cootie, yes, at fifty nine hundred up here. Um, I'm going to rely a little bit on the, his approach play. Um, so I think that uh, we'll go with Parker Cootie at fifty nine hundred. Dude, Parker is good. You know, I I kind of fancy him on the bigger tracks, but I don't mind him at all. All right. Are you ready for a name you weren't expecting to hear at all this, this week? Yes. <laughs> if you got your Doug rug in your house, you're going to want it with some Wilson fur. And I think that is the price you're going to pay is $5,100. For the majority of you listening to the show, it's probably the first time you've heard his name. And he is a real person. He has a top 40 on the PGA Tour at the Mexico Open. He has th two missed cuts and a WD, but the, the two missed cuts were by like one shot. So... I'll take that. He's only played four times since the beginning of the year. He's all over the place. He had a really strong finish on the Corn Ferry Tour. So if he can bounce back in that department, $5,100 Wilson Fur. Wow. Wilson Fur. Let me tell you something about him, actually. I, I We did this in the Nut Hut. We did like a season-long snake draft kind of thing. And kind of like we're doing now, but it was, I don't know, there's 15 players in there yeah. or 15 people that did it. And uh, Wilson Fur was one of my last draft picks. Ooh, so nice. I, I do think uh, I, I like that as well. I think that's a, that's a good play. Good pull by you there. Um, all right. What in the hell am I going to do for this last play? Um, all right. I think what I'm going to do. <laughs> No, I'm not. I can't go Peter. Come on, Pat. Money. I can't do that. Let's go balls to the wall in the, in, the, in the 5K draft, yeah. All right, I'll tell you what I want to do. This one, this one kept kept jumping out at me a little bit. He He's he's checking some boxes in the BTN model. Nico Echeverria has two top, top 25 finishes, by the way, in his last three events. Um, did miss a cut at the players, but I'm going to go with Nico Echeverria. That will be my last play. Um, Byron. 
It's been awesome. Appreciate you coming in to do both the betting show and the DFS show this week. You're an amazing person and you do great work. We appreciate all the stuff you do to help TJ out, whether it's in the Nut Hut Discord, coming in last minute to fill in for DB. Prayers to DB, by the way. We hope he's, uh, you know, he has a good week and he'll be back next week. I promise. I think he should be. And um, Byron, you've been an excellent fill in. And uh, any final thoughts before we get out of here? I just want to say the Anchorman send off for Nico Achiveria, where you kind of you know shuffle the paper up there as you kind of wrapping up your your synopsis, was a touch of of class there, as a just a little <laughs> hint of Ron Burgundy added to your DNA profile there, Pat. So I, I appreciate that. But been a fun time, man. I haven't had you on my show. We'll get you hacking it in Hollywood at some point soon, but. Lots of fun information discussed and some some fun nicknames with old Stanger. And we'll, you know, hopefully we gave the people what they needed without DB showing up and, you know, sending our best regards to the guy and his fam bam. Yeah, awesome. Um, all right, well, that is it for the Valspar DFS show. As we always say, uh, may your screens be green. DB says, see ya. I say, out. Byron says, what? Ding! Let's go. Have a week. <laughs> All right, here we go. Greetings, folks. Welcome to the Tour Junkies DFS pot. pot yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. Keep it up. I'm going to start it. <laughs> but you know it's probably going to happen as soon as you put that in here anyway. <laughs> That's going to be a great open. <laughs> <laughs> the black one. Damn it. What, what <laughs> letters were those even? <laughs> Got BTN. Damn DFS. you. I'm tired of this. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the DFS podcast for on, the Valspar Championship. Do um, that again, Pat. Wow. What a start. And um, Tony's stopping me. Do that again because you froze. Is. You froze right as you started. Yeah. Do what again? Just start. Yeah, just start the show over again. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hang on. Heck on it. This internet thing is just driving me crazy. This would be a great first two minutes of a live show for sure. It really would. And it would just be like what happens to me. I could probably be working off my damn phone right now and it'd be better than my house internet. <laughs> I think. Um, all right. All right. We good, Tony? We're good. All right. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll move on to the 8K range. And um, by the way, the 8K range is uh, brought to you by Underdog, Byron. And I don't, I, I love Underdog, but. I don't have any of the codes in front of me. So I don't know <laughs> the um, anyway, just listen. Go to Underdog. Check out. They have the best ball drafts, which is absolutely fantastic. We got a graphic up here on the show. You can click that that scan thing, and there's a link in the description as well. So go to the link in the description, and you can get all the stuff we have with underdog and it's fantastic because i love underdog i love playing it uh i think it's a it's an amazing stuff they're doing a lot of good stuff now with golf um and that's that's huge so i think that's a that's a big deal especially as we lead up here into the masters um you need to really get involved with underdog so um there you go By byron db's gonna be mad at me for that one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 